Hi booktube, Lynette here and in this video I am going to talk about the best and worst books that I've read in the year 2020. I've got a little visitor with me in my video today um, so he's probably going to demand all the attention until he realises that I'm picking up books um, so please excuse me if I'm making a fuss of this little fella uh, at the same time as talking to you all. So the year started out really strongly for me um, on New Year's Eve 2019 I finished, started and finished Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone so I started January um, in pretty much the same way and during the course of January I read books two to five so uh, Chamber of Secrets, The Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire and uh, Order of the Phoenix during the month of January so I did start the year out really strongly, really well, had a great reading month to start with. So that set me off on a really good start um, but then I also had a book from the library that I wanted to finish and this turned out to be one of the best reads at the start of this year as well and that book is The Silent Corner by Dean Coombs. Uh, this is not a dystopian novel, it's set in the world we live in now but um, it's very much a conspiracy theory story and the main character, her husband has been killed and she doesn't believe that it was an accident or that it was suicide. I think it might have been suicide. Um, so trigger warnings for this book for suicide, scenes of suicide um, and suicidal thoughts. Um, but basically the premise is that the government are inciting people um, to commit suicide um, or killing them and making it look like accidents. And it's very, very freaky in the way that we're being tracked through all our mobile devices and um, how we live, CCTV. And it, um, although I'm not a conspiracy theorist, I'm really not, um, it does make you think about how much we technology we've allowed into our lives and how much information is actually out there about us on the internet. Um, so yeah, so I did start really questioning my use of the internet <laughs> right at the beginning of the year because of this book but I did really enjoy it I gave it four out of five stars and if you like uh, thriller slash suspense novels then this is definitely one for you to give it a try I used to read a lot of Dean Koontz when I was in my early 20s and he is an author I want to get back to and want to start reading more of again in the future from there, with being on the Harry Potter kick, I was actually really craving um, some fantasy and the next books that I read that really, really blew me away were the Strange the Dreamer duology by Lainey Taylor. Um, I fell in love with these books. I fell in love with Lainey Taylor's writing. Um, if you've seen any of my videos from the beginning of the year where I was reading these, I was gushing about them. Um, I couldn't not talk about them and they have definitely stayed with me as potentially actually the best books of the year. Um, I'm not really, I'm doing the, this in the order that I've read books rather than um, count, a countdown because I couldn't uh, give you any idea of where these books stand in in like one to ten. Um, not that there are ten books but yes these have stayed with me as the best books of the year. And I do thoroughly recommend them. They're young adult. They're about a young man called Strain, Laszlo Strange. And he works in a library. And he's been reading about this city. And he's been researching the city since he was a small boy. But one day the name of the city disappears from all the writings. And no one else can remember it. People only know it as the City of Weep. In Strange the Dreamer, the first book in the duology, he then gets the opportunity to actually go to the city and he grabs it with both hands. And it follows on from what happens after that. Um, I can't really tell you any more about it because to say any more about it would give it away. But they are very, very good fantasy novels and I thoroughly enjoyed them. Like I say, I fell in love with Lainey Taylor's writing and I'm really looking forward to moving on um, to her next series that she wrote. Uh, there's actually, no, no, there's a previous series to this, not the next series, um, which I'm hoping to get my hands on very shortly. Um, so 
again that continued so i read strange the dreamer in february and muse of nightmares the sequel i read over the course of february and march and like i say absolutely fell in love with them i'd had borrowed them from the library um and then once i'd finished reading muse of nightmares i had to ha have my own copies to keep them on the shelf um because they're just ones I, I want to talk about and show people and say hey you need to read these books and then the next best book that I read um, and again it was very early in the year so again this was around about March time um, I think it was actually April March April um, and that was Lancelot by Giles Christian this is um, a telling uh, an Arthurian set telling of the backstory of Lancelot um, right the way through to how he parts from Arthur and Guinevere um, and is eventually reunited with Arthur and I absolutely loved it I've always been intrigued I said in my videos when I was talking about this one when I was reading it back at the beginning of the year I've always been intrigued by the um, legends of King Arthur and this book really was no exception to that. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I liked the backstory that we got for Lancelot. So we got to see him grow from a very small boy into a man. And I'm really looking forward to the next book, Camelot, which is out, but it's only out in hardback. Um, and I don't like having mismatching books on my shelf. So I will be at some point um, when it comes out next year, I will be investing in the paperback of Camelot so that I can continue reading the series. Um, it is very richly woven story. There is lots of detail and information in there. And if you like the stories of King Arthur, if you like historical fiction, then I really do uh, recommend that you give Charles Christian a go because he this is the first book of his that I've read but I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to reading more by him in the future and then the final best book of the year that I've read is one that I've read very recently and if you've seen my recent wrap-up videos I'm um, talking about this then this should be no surprise to you but that is Rose Matter by Stephen King as I said in my November wrap-up this has been a favourite of mine since I was about 15 16 years old uh, it's about Rosie McClendon who runs away or Rosie Daniels at the point that she runs away from her abusive husband trigger warnings for rape um, for scenes of physical abuse uh, for description of miscarriage um, there is a lot in this book it's not a horror novel although that's what Stephen King is known for this is more a thriller slash suspense with the fantastical thrown in Please excuse the cat. He's had enough of me ignoring him. Like I say, I absolutely adore this book. Um, it's one that during my late teens, early to mid 20s, I read it just about every single year. Uh, back in 2013, I got rid of my physical copy of it, which I deeply regretted. And in November, I was gifted this copy by a friend and I'm very grateful to that friend for doing that for me um and this is one that I will not be getting rid of again I have learned my lesson and I will definitely definitely be keeping this on my shelves um so as I was saying so Rose Daniels she runs away from her abusive husband and she crosses America and takes up residence when in an abused women's shelter and from there she rebuilds her life and she becomes a successful audiobook narrator and she meets a man and she falls in love and it's about what happens then the second half of the book is about what happens when her husband tracks her down and that's where the fantastical elements come in I really loved the fantastical elements in this book. Um, they really, really intrigued me to the point where I want to know if any of it is based in fact. There's not a lot of information there to, to say whether it's based in fact or not. Um, but it does have a lot of Greek mythology um, tendencies to the fantastical element. So those were the five best books that I read in this year. I do have um, a lot of, I had a very good reading year in the end. I had a lot of three and four star reads. Um, in fact, those books that I've mentioned, I think only the Strange the Dreamer duology were five star reads this year. But I, I had a really good reading year. Um, 
I didn't really have too many bad books, but uh, so I just want to give um, special mention to some romance books that I read. Um, I've kind of fallen a little out of love with romance um, in the last 18 months, two years. Um, I have found myself reading a lot more of the fantastical uh, fantasy. Um, le I'm leaning back towards, like I say, Dean Koontz and Stephen King, who were favourites of mine in my 20s. And but there were some romance books that actually did just hit the spot this year. Uh, the first of those is the Smoke and Mirrors duology by Jodie Ellen Malpass. I read these um, uh, mid of the year to, to late year. And it's about it's based around the British monarchy um, and it, the princess of the UK, Princess Adeline of the UK, she has fallen in love with a Hollywood actor and it's a forbidden romance and it's about how the two of them find their way uh, through and navigate the system and how they get their happy ever after. I thoroughly enjoyed it, I like the way that Jodie Allen Malpas didn't tie everything up in a neat bow, um, not every she Princess Adeline didn't get everything, um, which I thought was really great because sometimes authors have a tendency to do that, and I really appreciated that and really enjoyed it. Another one I want to give a special mention to is Revved by Samantha Towell. This was a reread for me. I actually read this when it first came out. It's a sports romance based in the world of Formula One. I actually really enjoy watching Formula One, so this was uh, quite a novel take on it for me. You don't get a lot of the sport um, in the book. It is more behind the scenes information. Um, but I felt that she did it really, really well. It's about a woman, Andy, who is a mechanic in the world of Formula One. And she joins the team where the race car driver, Carrick, um, is the atypical playboy, gorgeous. Um, everybody loves him. Everybody wants him. Uh, but she's the one that he can't live without. And I really enjoyed it. It's a friends to lovers uh, romance novel. And it was at the time that I read it, it was kind of reflecting um, some things that were happening for me. And I really, really enjoyed it for that reason as well. Um, but also I haven't read a book by Sam Towell for a while and it just reminded me why I love her writing and why she is one of my standout authors and one of my autobi authors. I don't need to know um, what a book is about to pick it up and buy it from her. And then the final books I want to give a special mention to are all by the same author. They're all by Kay Bromberg and they were all uh, new releases. So the first one is Then You Happened. The second one is Flirting with 40. And the third one is Hard to Handle. Again, Kay Bromberg never fails to hit the spot for me. Um, there were, with things that have been happening in my private life um, over the course of the last couple of years, some of the things that were happening in these books, some of the things that were um, she was talking about, writing about, really hit the nail on the head and taught me some lessons myself, um, especially this year. There were there were some things in uh, Then You Happened that I really needed to hear. Uh, it gave me a bit of a kick up the bum and to get myself sorted out. Um, flirting with 40 was very, very similar. There were some issues that the main character had that were reflecting how I was feeling about myself, how I'm still feeling about myself, um, but I'm working on it. And it gave me that kick to do it. Um, and again, Hard to Handle, again, was another friends slash enemies to lovers romance. And again, there was just a few things in there that I needed to hear. Um, which weren't great, but I needed to hear them at the time. I also want to mention the In Death series by J.D. Robb. J.D. Robb is a brand new author to me this year. Um, I've never read any of her romance bef novels before. She has two writing names. So she writes as J.D. Robb and she writes the In Death series. And then she writes contemporary romance as Nora Roberts. Um, I haven't read any of the work she's put out as Norma Rob Nora Roberts. I've only read the In Death series and I've been reading one book a month, every month since the beginning of January. And I've thoroughly enjoyed it. 
The In Death series is huge. There are currently 51 books in the series. I believe book 52 is due out early next year. Um, and I am working my way through them. Um, one a month, I think, is great. I should have caught up with the series in about three years' time if I carry on like this. Um, but I think one a month is actually a really good way to do it because it is such a huge series now um, that I think it just keeps you going and you don't get burnt out on it because I read a lot of other things in between. So I'm really glad that I chose to join the In Death Read Along this year um, and I think it is definitely something I'm going to carry on into 2021 because I've really enjoyed reading these books. They're a little bit of light relief in between some of the heavier fantasies I've been reading this year and I look forward to continuing on. As for worst books of the year, I didn't really have terrible books. I just had books that really didn't hit the mark. And it wasn't that the writing was necessarily bad, although maybe it well, could have been better um, tweaked. Uh, but the first book I want to talk about is David Copperfield. Um, I started reading this as part of my plan to read classics this year. It's a book that I read when I was about nine, ten years old, ten, eleven years old, and I don't know how I got through it at that age. Um, I picked it up and I started reading it and I really, really struggled. And I haven't got past David Copperfield as a boy and his mum marrying his stepfather because I just, I couldn't keep reading it. Um, I have no idea what it was. I just, as an adult, this was not the book for me. Uh, so I had, did DNF it. I've kind of totally, I, I, what I tend to do is I do tend to DNF books and then think, well, maybe I'll come back to them at another time. With this one, I think it is a definite DNF. I'm probably never going to pick it up again. Um, so I was quite sad about that because I love A Christmas Carol. Um, and I have read a few other uh, Charles Dickens novels, but I don't know. A lot of them, like I say, I read when I was a child. Um, and I wouldn't say that they are actually uh, recommended reading for children. Um, I think I was just reading beyond my years at that point. So that's what my family gave me. The next book was a romance novel. And I think this is where I started to realise that actually I'm falling out of love with romance a little bit. And this book is The Leopard Prince by Elizabeth Hoyt. It wasn't a bad book. I was just underwhelmed by it. There are lots of tropes in this book and lots of things that happen in this book, which normally I'd not have an issue with. But there was just something about the way it was written that um, I just... I didn't, in this book, it just did not hit the spot. It's not bad writing, it's just not for me. Um, there may be others of you out there who absolutely adore Elizabeth Hoyt's writing. I'm toying with trying one more book by her because I did enjoy the first book in this series, um, The Prince's Trilogy, but I'm really not sure that I actually want to carry on that much past it. It's an historical romance novel and it's about um, a, a, the daughter of a duke, um, a lady who has her own money, has her own wealth, um, has her own property and it's about how she falls in love with the man that she employs to run the estate but he is accused of a crime and it's how they prove his innocence. Um, like I say, it's not a bad not a bad storyline it sounds right up my alley but in this book it really just was not for me and then the final book that i didn't enjoy quite as much again it's another romance and this is lost in paradise by rachel lacey this is about uh, this is a female female romance um two women who meet on a cruise at the point that the cruise is hijacked um, by pirates they manage to escape overboard and end up trapped on an island, an inhabited island. And it's about how they survive and eventually get rescued. And then how they navigate a relationship back in the real real world. It felt a little far-fetched to me, uh, the storyline. Um, I know that sort of piracy is happening out there in the world. 
uh, but the shipwreck on the deserted island and then eventually being found is the bit that really didn't ring true for me and I didn't enjoy it quite as much. Um, so I'm probably not going to read any more by Rachel Lacey. She's probably an author that's going to sit on the probably never going to look at again list. Um, it might be for you. Uh, don't take it that just because I don't like it that you won't enjoy it. Certainly give it a go if it sounds like the sort of thing you'd enjoy. Um, maybe you'll enjoy it more than I did. So those were my best and worst books of the year. Like I say, not a bad reading year at all. I think the majority of what I read was three and four stars. Um, very few two stars, only one DNF. Um, and Harry Potter, obviously. Um, I started a reread of The Hobbit um, again earlier this year, both in physical format and in audio. So I'm hoping to finish one of those before the end of the year, um, at least. Um, and I've really enjoyed my reading year this year. I had lots of time um, to get through quite a few big chunky books um, back in April and May during the first lockdown that we had in the UK. I've continued reading some chunky books since then and I'm really catching the bug again for fantasy novels and a little bit for sci-fi. I've got one up there that I want to start reading um, very soon. And I'm hoping that 2021 will be just as good, if not better, a year than 2020 was. I hope that uh, you've all had really great reading years. Please let me know in the comments down below um, your best and worst books of the year. I'd love to hear about them. Um, you never know, some of your worst books might be some of my best books of next year and vice versa. If you've enjoyed this video please give me a like thumbs up and please if you're not already subscribe to the channel and i will see you all again soon in my next video bye